Hello there, ladies and gentlemen. Mole Trap here, coming at you with game four of Liquid Tyler versus EG Idra. And uh, this promises to be another exciting game. We've had some very, very good games thus far. And again, this is part of the GosuCoaching.com show match that happened recently. I totally forgot to explain Gosu Coaching uh, and game two, like I said I was going to at the end of game one. Um, basically, you've got uh, a lot of the um, uh, top U.S. Brood War players, who are now some of the top U.S. StarCraft II players, are basically offering lessons um, in StarCraft II. Um, in Control, Future, um, uh, LZ Gamer, Machine, for instance, and they just added a few new coaches as well, uh, whose names I don't recall exactly. Hash, I believe... ZMG Protoss Rush, if I recall correctly. Anyway, Sonic Reaver, longtime coach for them as well. Um, anyway, so you can go and basically get lessons from uh, high level diamond players if you are interested, and they will teach you how to play Gosu. Um, so definitely check that out, you know, if you've got. I don't think it's too expensive. I don't actually know how much they charge, but I don't believe it's too terribly expensive. If you've got some money and you want to um, get better at StarCraft 2 and you really want to learn, you know, the tricks of the trade that'll make the difference, then you can go check it out there. Um, <laughs> sounded like an advertisement, didn't it? No, I'm, they're, they're just good guys. And, you know, like Diggity has said before, too, it would be so cool. These They're such cool guys, and it would be so awesome if they could, you know, make their living off of StarCraft 2. And I, I, I believe they are, you know, working other jobs and stuff like that um, to, to get by. And so it'd be really, really sweet if they could, you know, actually be professional esportsians. Uh, anyway, spawning pool up first here. Um, not sure how much, how good of an idea that was, uh, considering the fact that new, uh, Tyler, rather, sorry, Tyler, probably not. I guess if he was worried, if it was close positions, the close positions are very close. Uh, and if there's a proxy, there's all kinds of places for proxies, too, uh, that are hard to scout. So, uh, maybe that's why he was worried and wanted to get that pool up first. But, uh, on this map, it's so easy to hold your ramp for your secondary. It's, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's almost crazy. Crazy not to get your fast expansion, basically, uh, as Zerg. Since, uh, as we can see, gave him time for that probe to come in and really, really shut down this expansion as well uh, so he's probably only going to take out that pylon he's going to place his hatchery properly now but uh, he is uh, in a little bit of he's pretty behind because that hatchery was really really delayed uh, and he doesn't really have a whole lot to show for it he's making a second queen off his main hatchery so he's got a second uh, queen already set up looks like he's going to set down a creep tumor so he can start um, getting the creep going between his two bases so he can move in uh, move things around quickly and look at this Chrono boosting uh, the warp gate tech, chrono boosting out a sentry, uh, getting a second sentry as well. Again, pretty nice construction. And uh, Tyler in Brood War was known uh, for having incredibly immaculate base construction. And here we see him uh, again having a pretty uh, clean base construction here in StarCraft 2. Interestingly, he was also known as being a super conservative player in uh, in StarCraft 1. He was, he was just you know, played super safe and just macroed and just beat you with just pure mechanics. And uh, I noticed towards, uh, you know, a little bit in TSL 2 and now even more in StarCraft 2, he's kind of opening up from that a little bit. I, I haven't seen a ton of his games, but it just seems off the top of my head like that's uh, kind of a change in style there. So it's very interesting to, to see that happening as well. Anyway, and we can see that he is, in fact, mixing things up a little bit. Uh, going for different builds different times this time he's gonna get a couple extra gateways and then go for a nexus uh, gonna immediately warp gate those in just a moment once this warp gate tech finishes a little bit of a waste of a chrono boost since that uh, tech was almost finished he may not have even been looking at it actually he may have just you know <clears throat> sometimes I'll do that if I, if I know warp gate tech is going I'll just uh, occasionally chrono boost it since it takes such a long time to get that research going and now he does have those three warp gates and he's gonna be able to warp in units pretty quick here Idra just prodding the, the front here prodding the surface with um, with zerglings it looks like Idra's basically doing the same thing just droning up and getting a creep tumor and getting his tech and if uh, if history serves us he's probably gonna get a roach worn pretty quick here uh, if he hasn't already so I'll get the prod tub prod tab up there there we go where is it I missed it I missed it oh it's back here 
duh. And uh, he, he's got this build timed so that his Roche Warden comes up about the same time as his Lair does, and he can immediately start getting uh, speed. Look at that. Boom! As soon as the Roche Warden pops, speed upgraded for the Roaches, and then we're probably going to see him just pump Roaches off this again. It's going to be a little bit better for him. Well, maybe, because it's such a long distance that it's going to be harder for Nuni to pressure him without him with him getting caught off guard. He's got four Zerglings out in front of this ramp. So if Nuni decides... I'm sorry, I keep calling him Nuni. I'll call him Tyler again. Uh, whatever, same guy. Um, if Tyler moves out to try and, uh, you know, pressure him like before, he'll be able to see it and he'll have a plenty of time to uh, to get some roaches out, get some defenses out. I would like to see some hydras as well. Uh, the Guardian Shield can be so effective against hydras, but still... Uh, hydras are, are, are a lot easier for dealing with uh, with stalkers. They deal with it much more effectively. Anyway, ooh, ooh, what we got over here? Ooh, we got shenanigans. We got a third base going up in the top of the map. It's kind of a sneaky base. Uh, it's not going to be easy for uh, Tyler to know it's there. Um, yeah, let's see. Where are these stalkers going? Are they worried about a... What are they worried about? Maybe they saw an overlord over here. Yeah, okay. Oh, that must have been... He must have dived the Overlord in to try and scout the tech. What's going on? Oh, this Overlord's gonna get popped! Oh, get out there, Overlord! Get out! Um, so Idra... And Idra is now actually sort of giving away his position by creeping uh, all the way over to his new base. And I like this. He, he's got the Overlords over here now. And with the speed, he can safely just, you know, generate creep and have this nice little creep highway um, uh, due to the overlords and uh, and get them out of the way if necessary. He's got those roaches, and this time he's not actually massing roaches, uh, which is a good move. He's actually getting a spire almost completed, but now he's got to worry. He's, he can't wait for that spire. you got to get some units out pretty quick. Uh, he's got some minerals in the bank. He's got a lot of gas in preparation for... Um, and luckily, we just saw seven roaches go into production there. Uh, and more popping out, actually, here. So he's just trying to desperately get up as much force as he can. He, I think he needs to fall back to his ramp at this... Well, actually, the ramp might not even help him. Uh, because with the open territory, he's going to be able to surround these units a little bit better and not get caught as much by those force fields. Ouch! Look at those force fields. Nicely done. Trapping just a few roaches. And trying to do it again. Failing this time. Beautiful, well, almost inadvertent dodge by uh, by Idra, and he's keeping his Zerglings back as well, wasting down the energy. He's still got several force fields left, though. Again, using them to, to trap just a few units, and basically it's almost like an attack uh, if he can spend that mana to kill a few units. And there he does it again! Idra's forced to engage, and half of his troops cut off, not able, even with the four range, the modified uh, range of four, forced to fall back. This is huge. If Tyler presses in right now, he's going to win the game right off the bat. This is for all the marbles as well. Uh, wow, this is absolutely huge. It's going in uh, with tons and tons of stalkers, and it looks like Idra is going to go down in another game, force fielding this entire area, keeping Idra's forces from becoming solidified, and just doing a beautiful, beautiful job of it. No, Not many force fields left, but there we go. GG! Tyler takes game four. I said it was for all the marbles, but it wasn't actually for all the marbles. The next game could be for all the marbles. Uh, I, for some reason, I thought this was game five, but I was mistaken. This is actually game four. Um, so, Idris still has a chance to come back in this series. Um, I don't know why I keep getting the game numbers wrong, but uh, here we have Tyler up three to one, and I don't think, I, I didn't expect this at all. I would have expected it to be the other way around. Um, anyway, so we've got some impressive play coming from Tyler. Just beautiful, beautiful micro um, in every every single battle. Uh, anyway, hope you guys enjoyed that. Thanks very much for watching. Let's go ahead and move on to game five and see if uh, Tyler can clinch the $400 or if Idra can come back and uh, give him a run for his literal money. Take care. GG.